Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again, and that means we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the latest instalment of the Riku box. So first and foremost, a massive shout out and thank you to Riku Sinaxanapo, my Finnish beer mule. It's thanks to him that you guys are getting to enjoy some Finnish reviews here on the channel. He always picks me out some really, really good stuff and uh, we've had some great beers from Finland so far. So I really hope that you guys are enjoying these reviews actually. So a massive kipis and kitos to Riku. Now the beer we're gonna have a look at today comes from a brewery that has featured on the channel a couple of times before. These guys are a very well-rounded brewery in my experience. They do lots of different things and they're probably one of the first Finnish breweries that you'll come across outside of Finland. They really have been working to get their beers out there a little bit more. So if you come across them, I highly recommend that you look at them. The beer that we're looking at is a style that I haven't tried from them before. I believe it's the first one they've released in this particular style category and this particular style category as well is one that I've been getting more into over the last wee while actually. So needless to say I'm very very curious to see what this one's going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah for this review then we are going to head back to Espoo which is right next to Helsinki, the Finnish capital in the south of the country and we're going to have a look at another beer from Salama Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Cloudberry. It comes in at 9.1% ABV and this one is a wild ale. So this beer has been aged in red wine barrels. As the name suggests, it contains cloudberries, hjortron in Swedish or lakoya as I believe it is in Finnish. Did I write that down properly? Yes, I did. But um, yeah, this one should be quite interesting because it also contains uh, a Finnish hop called Sunti, which I have never encountered before. And it's also the first wild ale that Salama have released, if memory serves me correctly. This one was very kindly given to me for free by the brewery when I went to visit them in Finland over the summer. They told me to take one of these away and try them. So big thank you to the guys at Salama Brewing Company as well. Riku took this home because I didn't have checked baggage on the plane and we're finally uh, getting this one to have a look at now. But yeah, as I say, this review should be pretty good. Quite an unusual uh, thing to find a Cloudberry Wild Ale. So we'll crack on and see what we have here. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Salama Brewing Company before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. I've got another two or three beers to look at from these guys this time round, but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography based tagging system. Put in your hometown, state, county, prefecture, whatever you like into the search bar. And if I've reviewed beers from your area, they will pop up. And you can also check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Finnish playlist and there are many other things in there as well. And that's getting added to quite a lot at the moment because we've got a lot of beers from Finland and there will be more in the future. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a little bit about Salama Brewing Company or Lightning Brewing Company as it would be in English. But uh, yeah, as I've mentioned to you already, Salama Brewing Company are based in Espoo in Finland and the company was founded back in 2019 by a group of friends. So the men behind the company are Christian Homlund, Jako Ailio, Johannes Jervinen and Vila Sarikoski. So Christian is the CEO and he has a background in running small medium enterprises while Jako is the brewer and Johannes takes care of the kind of bureaucracy side of the business. But Vila acts as the art director of the company and uh, you might see, you won't see it so much on this one actually, but when you see the Salama cans you will notice that they have a very distinctive style. But the brewery itself is very close to the IKEA and Yorvi Hospital out to the north of Espoo and their brewing equipment came from China. They've got a theoretical brewing capacity of 130,000 litres but in their first year they brewed 50,000 litres and they have been gradually scaling this up over the, the last few years. Uh, they recently opened up a tap room at the brewery um, although 
go, this is more like a terrace. It's more that you go there, you can taste the cans and you can sit on the terrace. If you check out my out and about video that I did at Salama, you will see that as well as their bar in Helsinki. And um, yeah, Yako says that over the next week while, they're going to start focusing on the lighter styles such as paleos, IPAs and double IPAs. They've started on their sour beers as well, but they have also got, you know, imperial stouts barley wines and the big heavy buggers as well uh, but yeah this is the very first time i believe they've done a, a proper uh th this is one of the first kind of barrel aged sour beers that they've done they have been experimenting a little bit with barrel aging on the darker side of things with the barley wines and the imperial stouts and such but apparently once they scale up they're planning to export around 70 percent of their output but as of november 2022 when i'm filming this review for you these guys have produced uh, 175 different kinds of beer according to untapped and like i mentioned earlier there are a variety of different styles in there you know um they've got barley wines they've got imperial stouts there's quite a few different kinds of ipa these days there's a few laggers as well uh, you name it salama have uh, have done it and like i say just a very solid all-round brewery in my experience so uh, yeah we'll need to get one of their ipas to review on the channel at some point but we couldn't really get one fresh for this um for the for the time that this box was coming but we'll see about that in the future uh, as i mentioned earlier the name of this brewery translates into english as lightning brewery and you will see that on the label of course which i'll show you in just a wee minute but that is everything that i can tell you about salama brewing company for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can of course check out the brewery website Follow them on the usual social media, Facebook and Instagram. And you can, of course, go onto the untapped page as well and see the list of all the different beers that they've done. Or you can check out some of the other reviews that I've done from these guys in the past. But uh, yeah, that's it for the brewery history section. Let's get on and have a wee look at the beer itself. So I'll just let you have a wee look at the artwork on the bottle of this one before we open it up. As you can see, it's got this nice kind of trippy pattern on it. The artwork on this one, incidentally, is quite different from what we see on the Salama cans. We will do uh, one of the cans in the next review, but there you can see the Salama writing on the side there, which is pretty cool. Cloudberry, as we said, and there is the Salama symbol, you know, the lightning cloud there. This is one thing that you will see on pretty much all of the cans. But this bottle, um, I forget what volume this is. I'm guessing it's maybe like a 375. Does it say? No. Hmm, that's kind of unusual. It doesn't say what the actual volume of this, but I'm guessing it will be about 375 milliliters. This is kind of normal for uh, one of these kind of sour beer wild ales, but quite an unusual shape, this one, of course. Uh, sorry, it does tell you on the side here, I'm telling you lies. 325 milliliters this one so yeah a wee bit smaller than the standard sort of 375 for wild ales of course but um yeah it does look pretty nice you can see we've got this lovely wax top on it of course which has sur survived remarkably well considering Riku took this beer up to Olu with him in his case and it's also been in the mail from Finland so uh, yeah survived remarkably well so the whole point of this of course is to keep the air out of the beer and so that it can do its own aging inside the bottle but yeah like we said this one is a 9.1% uh, wild ale it also contains uh, Sunti hop from Finland which I did a little bit of research on apparently these were discovered in the early 2000s and there are a few Finnish varieties at the moment that have been named after the owner of the land upon which they're discovered but at present there are only about 10 hectares of land in Finland that are used for hop cultivation but there is a lot of research ongoing to investigate new varieties but Sunti I believe has been at the most successful thus far so yeah like i said this one is a wild ale it contains sunti hops it's been aged in uh, red wine barrels and it's also brewed with cloudberries or hjortron as you would say in swedish and uh, lakoya in finnish of course and um, i don't know if cloudberries are more native to sweden or finland but yeah i always was under the assumption that they were swedish correct me on that in the comment section below if i'm wrong but yeah let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting hopefully we can actually get the beer open but we'll see Ah, no, this one's quite easy. Some of these wax tops are absolute bastards to get off, but this one is okay. So yeah, as you can see, a little bit of smoke on the opening there, and we'll get the beer out and into the glass. So, this looks pretty good, actually. There we are. I think we can pour. We just need to be careful with it. But there we are, we can get the full thing out. You can see there are little bits of sediment in this one, 
but it's all natural and that is to be expected from these wild ales to be honest with you so there you are anyway this does look pretty good I have to say so not too much in the way of head on this one you can see that it has got uh, a kind of soapy kind of bubbly type head there I'll just like have a wee look at that yeah quite big bubbles sitting there that is just a very kind of thin foamy layer though and that is going to fade away the longer we kind of sit with this but yeah in terms of the colour I'll, I'll just let you see the sediment in this I'm not sure how well that's going to show up but yeah the uh, you can see there's quite a wee bit of sediment to this one but uh, yeah, in terms of the colour, this one is pretty impressive. For me, if I shine the light through this one, I would describe it as being quite a rich sort of uh, amber colour, this one. Uh, but yeah, lots of sediment floating around in this one, which you would kind of expect. And that's obviously going to contribute to the flavour. I maybe should have poured it a little bit more carefully, but um, we kind of stirred it up a wee bit when I was moving the bottle around and things. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil uh, helps that as well, because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, and thus you get a darker coloured beer. Any barrel agent that you do and any adjuncts that you put in can affect the colour of the beer as well. When it comes to wild ales like this, that does play quite a big role. The sort of lovely amber colour you're getting from this one will probably be due to the cloud berries and I wouldn't be surprised if the red wine barrels play a little bit of a role in promoting that as well but yeah you can see the beer has a nice little bit of natural haze to it probably unfiltered of course there are one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there and a few little ones just going up toward uh, the surface there too but in terms of you know appearance from what you would expect from a wild ale with cloud berries in it there's nothing particularly surprising about um about this one so certainly does look the part i don't think we need to say anything else about the appearance of this one then so we can take a look at the aroma and just uh, and see what we have so let's dig into this one yeah that is pretty damn good i have to say um it's kind of what i would expect but it is very very nice um as i've said to you i've been getting more and more into the kind of farmhouse beers and wild ales and stuff like that recently and a lot of that is thanks to my colleague Alan at the, the Bishop's Arms in uh, Malmo he's really into these kind of these big crazy sort of wild ale beers and you know I always liked them but it's his, his kind of enthusiasm for the style has made me want to do more and more of these reviews on the channel so it's quite cool that I actually got a bottle of this to, to review for you and it's always cool to try a brewery's first effort at these you know Stieg Beriots here in Sweden did one recently and I thought it was pretty interesting and there's more and more there are more and more breweries out there that are focusing on these but this one is very very nice um, the first thing I have to say about it though is I don't find the cloudberries too obvious in this one um, it actually you know if I was smelling this blind I would think yeah it's a wine barrel aged sour um, but the cloud, I think I'm getting more of the vinous notes than the cloud berries. And of course, cloud berries are really, really tart. So this is the kind of thing you are going to get a little bit of that, those types of aroma mixed in with this one. But this beer gives you everything you would want from one of these wild ales. You've got the woodiness, you've got a nice kind of vinous character to it as well. You get the fruitiness. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. What I often find with these beers is that they're not the most complex in terms of their aromas but when you actually taste the beer and you let the aftertaste develop this is where you get a lot of the, the kind of interesting this is where you get a lot of the interesting things with this beer um but yeah let's break the aroma down and just describe it for you a wee bit more kind of in depth so yeah with this one absolutely you get that lovely kind of woody backbone and um, so you can smell the oak in this one and i'm pretty sure just from the the oak is quite smooth, but it's got a little bit of dryness to it. So to me, that indicates European oak rather than American oak. Uh, if you've got the American oak, of course, it's a little you get a little bit more vanilla out of it. And it's just a little bit sweeter. So for me, yeah, you can smell the nice kind of slightly, you can smell the nice oaky character. It's a bit drier at the back of the nose right enough. There is, on top of that, of course, you can smell a little bit of the the Venice character. I, if I was smelling this one blind, I don't know that I would guess it was red wine barrel aged. That's one of the things with this. Um, I'm still learning, of course, with these wild ales. I'm not madly familiar with them compared to how I am with other beer styles. But, yeah. 
the woody backbone to this beer is, is lovely and it gets the more that you smell this one and the more your nose adjusts to it the more it just pushes its way out so like I say you've got that lovely kind of woody layer in there you do get a teeny hint of vanilla out of it not too much and then you've got the kind of vinous notes sitting on top of that from the beer itself you do I do get a little bit of breadiness you know there is a little bit of a kind of white bready you know farmhousey and kind of crackery type note to it um almost a little bit wheaty as well actually does it say this beer i do suspect this has got a bit of wheat in it it does also has a wee bit of oat as well and that's maybe the reason why that the malt base is coming out you know so smoothly in this one I've, i don't think i've ever had a wild ale that has oats in it so that's another interesting point about this most of them just use barley malt or a bit of wheat in my experience so to have oats in there as well is quite interesting um but as i say you get a little bit of kind of fresh white bread bread crust in there you have got that soft and kind of fluffy white bready character as well but it is very smooth and that's um i think the wheat that's going to do that in this one but the oats will affect it as well and then when your nose is kind of properly adjusted to this beer you do get a little bit of this kind of butter candy butterscotch type note out of it so yeah that's quite interesting i wonder if there's a wee touch of a uh, there's maybe a teeny little touch of like a biscuity note to this one i'm curious to see um whether these aromas i'm picking up actually show in the in the flavor when we taste it but yeah it does smell pretty nice this one um when it comes to the green component and the hoppy side of things um, this is always quite interesting and especially so because we've got a hop in here that I don't know. Um, when it comes to wild ales like this the mentality of the brewer when it comes to hopping the beer is always quite interesting and the old school Belgian ones they put old hops in there so that it, or hops that have been aged a little bit so that it doesn't take away too much from the, uh, the sour side of the beer. Um, and in this one I think I'm drinking this fairly fresh, but what you're always going to find with these beers is that the longer you leave them, the more the green component will drop out of the beer. So you have to kind of bear this in mind. So this beer still has a good little bit of that green component in there. There's a wee bit of earthiness um, for sure, and there's a little touch of herbal quality. Um, and it has got that nice, it has got a nice little bit of grassiness in there. I don't find this one overly floral. There is a little bit of that there, but it's got a nice wee bit of grassy zestiness. I don't think I mentioned earlier that these Sunti hops are like, you know, 4%-ish alpha acid. Um, so yeah, you have got a little bit of that in there. And then on top of that, of course, you've got the, the fruity side of this beer. So let's look at that. Um, of course, you've got the cloudberries in there. And right in the top of the nose, you can smell that big tart character that you expect to cloudberries. If you've ever tried them, you know... I tried them when I first came here to Sweden. They are tart as fuck. They are, um, you know, they've got a real kick to them. And I've had one or two cloudberry sours. Recently, we had one from Maria Torriets Microbrigade uh, in Stockholm, and that was awesome. It was a really nicely done beer. But you can certainly smell that big, tart, distinctive cloudberry character in this one. It's a really hard flav uh, flavour or aroma to describe, to be honest with you. Um, if you know it, you know it. It's one of these one of these things. It's like yuzu in Japan, um, but underneath that, of course, you do have a little bit of like of other things going on. There's a wee touch of sultana, a little bit of an oily pear, maybe a wee bit of like a fresh green apple, uh, coming out underneath the cloudberries in this beer. So as I always say, take a bit of time to mull over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it is about time that we have a taste of this one. And see what we've got so yeah this one is the cloudberry a 9.1 percent um cloudberry wild ale aged in red wine barrels it doesn't say for how long uh but also with a finish hop soon tea so yeah let's get stuck into this one slanger skull cheers and as they say in finland hippies Oh yeah, I'm going to say straight away, this beer is very, very nicely done, but based on the aroma, the, the malty and woody side of it's kind of what I was expecting, but the fruity side isn't. Um, I expected this beer to be really kind of sharp and punchy with its impact, but it's actually not really. Um, it's really quite mellow and kind of wet, 
I would say it's got this really nice kind of mellow wetness when you take it in. It's not massively tart, but yeah, it's really got quite a the the kind of uh, woody and, and malty side of this one is is very very smooth and just you know really in, it's really enjoyable actually it's one of the kind of sweeter wild ales as well that I've had in recent times um yeah this is quite interesting I've not had a red wine barrel aged sour beer for quite a wee while as well if memory serves me correctly so that's another thing to keep in mind with uh with this one this is this is something that is new to me both for the fruit and I guess it's a, a type of barrel aging we've not done in ages but it's a very interesting beer this one and I'm, I'll be on the basis of this one I will be curious to see what uh, Salama do with the other beers that come out in this series so yeah let's just take this one and break it down as we always do yeah it's pretty damn nice um but yeah middle third of your palate then as you often get with these beers you can feel the backbone of the beer is the woodiness from the barrel so you can feel that nice woody character there and um, european oak it is that little bit drier as you go further forward on the palate though it does like sweeten up and smoothen out slightly but as you go further back of course you start to get a little touch of the uh the dryness out of the beer and remember the kind of sweeter flavours come out further forward on your palate the drier and more bitter flavours come out further back you can see that gradient in this beer so on top of that of course you start to get the kind of wine characteristics whenever you've got barrel aging you always get the spirit or the wine or whatever sitting on top of that and um, as i say if i was drinking this beer blind without knowing what it was i would i i, I don't know if i would guess it was red wine to be honest with you, I'd probably think it was a wee bit more. Um, it was. I, I think I would guess this was white wine, to be honest. So this is maybe somewhere that I need to refine my palate a little bit. So I always say you're always learning when you're doing beer tasting. You should always look to learn about different beers and things. Uh, but yeah, the winey characteristics in this one are actually um, quite nice. But as I say, I would probably guess that it was white wine. But you've got that lovely kind of oily Venice layer on top of the... Uh, um, on, on top of the wood in this one so I like that above that though you start to get the malty characteristics of the beer so let's kind of focus on those yeah the malty characteristics of this beer they start to come out a little bit further into the aftertaste so above the kind of the, the winey layer in this beer actually gives you a lot of wetness to the mouthfeel but above the wood you do start to get a little bit of breadiness in there so you've got this wee bit of a like a, a kind of sort of almost wholemeal brown bready bread crust so there's a little bit of that in the beer then you've got a little bit of a more dense uh you do have a little bit of a more yeah dense wholemeal brown bready character and then above that you start to get there is a little touch of kind of white bread to this one. You can feel a little bit of the the kind of wheaty layer in there and then the oats. So you've got the kind of wheaty smoothness, but then down the middle line of your palate, you start to get the oaty creaminess out of this one. Um, and that just sits there as well. The, the wheat and the oats, I think, come out a little bit further into the aftertaste. And what you'll notice with this beer is that it's a bit brown bready in the beginning, but then as the, the, the aftertaste develops, you start to get the more white bready characteristics out of it. And for me, as I've always said, these wild ales, personally, what for me, what makes them good and what the reason I like them is because they always come in with a bit of sharpness and they just mellow out very, very nicely. But on top of the, the, the oaty layer, you start to get a little bit of the kind of Werther's Original, uh, kind of butter candy, butterscotchy type note out of this one. So yeah, in the dead centre of the palate, um, you can feel that little circle there where that kind of yeah butter candy butterscotch is sitting in of course so that is from the alcohol in uh, in the beer so it's really interesting this one this definitely has a bit more of a kind of oily and wet vibe to it compared to some of the other um sour beers and, and wild ales that we've had it's actually i've noticed this in the different nordic wild ales that i've had they often do have a little bit of a wetter 
uh, mouthfeel. So I do wonder if this is something to do with the barrel aging process, maybe when you're at higher um, latitudes and things. You know, this is a, it plays a big role in whiskey, you know, the humidity in the air and where you are in the world. So I wonder if this is a factor you have to think about when you're doing these uh, wild ales as well. It would make sense for sure. Uh, but to be honest, I think we've covered everything in the middle third of the palate. Let's go on to the back third of the palate now. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you do get a little bit of bready build up there. And the flavour composition is kind of the same, but the layers are, you know, a bit different. So at the back of your palate, you will notice that the, the woodiness is, is kind of dry. You do get a good little bit of that out of the beer. And I like that. I do like these beers when they get that bit more woody dryness to them. Above that, of course, you've got the, the white, the, the, the grapes coming out of this one. You can feel that sort of whiny character. And for me, again, that feels a lot more uh, dry. And as I say... It just, to, if I, it really is more like a white winey character that I get out of this for some reason. Not madly familiar with wine right enough, but yeah, the Venice notes in this one just strike me as being a bit more white wine, uh, actually. So, um, yeah, above that, you start to get, um, you do start to get a little bit of a more, uh, the more kind of bready layer. So you can feel the bready grey, the sort of, bread crust is a little bit more obvious and a wee bit more grainy there then you get the brown bready layer and it feels just a little bit taller and also a little bit more airy then you start to get the the, the white bread which i'm guessing is the wheat you get a real smoothness from the wheat in the back third of the palate and you can feel a wee bit of the oats just kind of creeping uh, over there the oats are a little bit drier i think in the back third of the palate and it's not often you get the oaty flavors in the back third of the palate and in my experience but yeah you can feel all these layers above all of that there is a little bit more of a kind of yeasty character um, coming out of the beer as well so yeah you can feel that above all of that you've got a little touch of a kind of sweeter bread you know and a wee bit of a kind of just honeycomb character coming out of this one so yeah definitely on the back third of the palate you can feel the flavor is taller then as you come further forward it just condenses down that little bit and squashes together so yeah i think that covers the woody and malty side of this beer let's go on to the green component the sourness and the fruity side of things then so um yeah back corners of the palate then green component to start so yeah this beer is not madly hop forward or hoppy or anything like this but you do get the remnants of the the green component in this one so back corners of the palate you do get that little bit of earthiness and as you come further forward it does develop a little bit of a herbal quality and you can feel the floral notes come out more and more as you push toward the kind of front corners of your palate and you can feel with this hop it certainly does seem to have a quite distinctive floral character to it it doesn't feel a million miles away from the, uh, the for example, the Ness hop that you have here in Sweden. That's grown at uh, Kronogordens here in Skjone, in the south of the country. So it has a little bit of a distinctive floral character to it. So it would be cool to try like a, a pale ale or something like that, or even a, a pilsner brewed with these hops. So I might need to speak to Riku about, uh, about that. That could be very cool. But round the front curve of the palate with this one, you certainly get a little bit of a a grassy character and it's got a wee bit of zestiness to it but certainly the the green component in this beer is is quite wet and you can feel that the green component the, the the hops have just dropped out of this one a little bit actually i should point out as well i think this beer was bottled about five months ago because when i was in finland if, if i remember correctly that was july and yeah we're now just at the end of uh, the end of november so yeah this beer it's about five months in the bottle, actually. So yeah, the green component will have dropped out a wee bit in comparison to when I actually got the bottle. But um, yeah, it does go together um, really quite nicely with that green component. Let's look at the front third of the palette then and just how things go together there. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palette, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up there. For me, it's quite white bready this time and you can feel the base of that front third of your palette is definitely kind of smooth, wood you can feel the wood gets smoother and smoother the further forward you come there is a bit of white bread there and potentially a little bit of oat 
in this one as well. So that's, uh, that is quite interesting with this one. But the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer, you certainly get more of the wheatiness coming out of it. I get more and more white bread out of this beer the further into the aftertaste that, uh, that I go. So um, yeah, let's look at this. So yeah, above the white third, uh, above the front third of your palate, that's when you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just kind of roll the way out of the beer. And of course, you've got the sour impact to this one as well. So at the back of that front third of your palate, you've certainly, you can feel there's a little bit of like a sultana, you know, dry white green grapes in the base. There's a little bit of an oily pear in there. And as you move further forward, onto the front half of the front third of your palate there's like a sort of fresh green apple but then above all of that you get the cloud berries uh, with the sour side of things so as I always say when you have a sour beer and the fruit the fruit comes in just behind the front tip of the tongue it gives you that little bit of sour impact and then that just rolls back uh, across the front of the tongue but this one really mellows out um, very very nicely in that in that regard that the sourness of this beer as I say this one is nowhere near as tart as I thought it was going to be cloudberries are tart as hell but this beer is actually very very mellow in its fruitiness but as I say when you take this one in you get the sort of sharp fruitiness uh, at the in the beginning so yeah you'll get that in this one the sharp fruitiness behind the front bit of the tongue it kind of mellows out and you get the juicy cloudberries but then you start to get the kind of vinous tannins um just coming underneath that and of course you've got the pear the sultana and the kind of fresh green apple i think the fresh green apple comes out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste that you go but the cloudberries and the sort of vinousy tannins are lingering there and of course the pear and sultana type flavors linger there too it's, it's really interesting how this beer pieces together but this is certainly quite different to other kind of wild ales that I've had over the last wee while. Uh, I mean, the main question to ask with this beer, is it enjoyable, is it nice? Um, I certainly quite like it, but if I compare it to the other ones, it's certainly not quite as dry as some other ones I've had. It's um, quite wet in its malty character as well. And it's certainly, in terms of what I would expect from a cloudberry sour, it's certainly, um, not quite as sharp and tart. But the thing you always have to remember with these beers is that your palate is constantly adjusting. So maybe I'm a little bit more used to uh, to cloudberries now than I would have been previously. So I don't find them quite as sharp and tart as I, I would have in the past. But um, yeah, I think that covers everything we need to say about the flavour of the beer. So we'll round off the review with just a wee quick look at the mouthfeel then. So for me, this one, Yeah, um, when I think about the wild ales, for me, I would say this one's actually one of the kind of slightly thicker and more oily ones within this style bracket that I've come across. I think overall, this beer is kind of pushing to the top end of mid-bodied, uh, but like I say, a little bit thicker within this particular style category. Carbonation is very, very smooth. It has that very clean mouthfeel that we would expect of quite a lot of Nordic beers, but there is a bit of oiliness and slickness to this beer as well. Uh, in terms of IBUs, I think this one's got to be, you know, like a kind of 5 to 10, something like that. I think, technically speaking, it might be zero IBU, but I, I do get a little bit of hoppy bitterness out of this beer, particularly the further into the aftertaste that you go. You do get a nice bit of dryness out of the, the wood in this one. You've also got those nice kind of vinous characters as well that come out. The malty base is, is quite smooth. You do get a little bit of graininess out of it and a wee touch of sweetness. And as we said earlier, you've got some nice big oily fruity characters to this one. A bit of tartness in the beginning, but yeah, this beer mellows out and becomes really quite smooth and sweet uh, the further along that you go with it. So um, yeah, the way this beer goes together, I think, is um, is very, very nice. A really interesting one, this actually. And after 3,500 reviews, you do want things that are going to test your palate. So um, yeah. I think this one is uh, is pretty damn good. But yeah, a solid, solid first effort from Salama Brewing when it comes to their uh, their barrel-aged, uh, their, their kind of wild ale barrel-aged series. So I look forward to seeing what they produce in the future because this was certainly quite cool to try. But um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. And again, a big thank you to the guys at the brewery for giving me this beer 
when I was there uh, to take away with me. That was pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, it certainly, uh, didn't, certainly did not disappoint. So yeah, let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Salama Brewing as well. We will be returning to these guys fairly soon because we've got another sour beer to look at from them, which is more of a modern sour. And we've also got two uh, big beers, which we'll be looking at as well. So that should be quite fun. But uh, uh, yeah, until the next time, uh, Slander just now, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Salama Brewing Company. Let me know any other Finnish wild deals that I should be checking out. But uh, yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll see you guys again soon. This was the Cloudberry from Salama Brewing Company, a 9.1% uh, wild ale with Cloudberries aged in red wine barrels with the Finnish Sunti hop. We'll need to investigate that a wee bit more. But until the next time, Slanja, Skull, cheers, keepies and ketos.